he will sit down with Russian leader Vladimir Putin in less than 24 hours from the now. The meetings are expected to last four to five hours. The first session, President Biden and his Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, Putin and Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov. Later, each side bringing in senior staff. On President Biden's agenda, cybersecurity, Russia's election interference, human rights and Ukraine. Karen Travers, ABC News, traveling with the president in Geneva. New York and California today lifted the last of their COVID-19 restrictions. On the same day, the U.S. hit a grave new benchmark in the pandemic, more than 600,000 deaths from the virus. Crystal Morgan's 15-year-old daughter, Dakota, is one of them. Dakota had no underlying symptoms or illnesses or diseases, and the virus took her in less than 72 hours from the first time she presented a symptom. The number is 200 times higher than the number of people who were killed on 9-11. Stocks tumbled as investors look ahead to this week's Fed meeting. The Dow fell 94 points. The Nasdaq gave up more than 100. You're listening to ABC News. From the KMET Weather Center for Beaumont, Banning in the Pass area, as we head into the evening, it'll be partly cloudy, the low tonight, 78, mostly sunny for tomorrow, the high 105, partly cloudy tomorrow night, 74, and mostly sunny Thursday, the high 104. For the Inland Empire, it'll be partly cloudy tonight, the low 77, and the Desert Cities, partly cloudy tonight, the low 77. I'm Dean Fettis for Smart Talk 1490 KMET. Take KMET 1490 AM with you everywhere you go by downloading our free smartphone apps found on the KMET website, KMET1490AM.com. You can also go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store on your phone to download the free app. Now you can listen live or play any of your favorite programmers' podcasts using your smartphone. Go to KMET1490AM.com and download your free phone app today. The following is a paid program. Views and claims expressed are those of the program producer and are not endorsed by this station. Opinions expressed are not necessarily those of radio station KMET, its management, employees, or affiliates. The WK Law Power Hour is here to take you from zero to hero in legal knowledge in 60 minutes. A law firm with 40 years of experience is ready to give you legal guidance you need for free. What could be better than that? Amazing stories about actual cases. Interesting and informative guests. Listen, watch, call in. Come ready to learn. And now your host for WK Law Power Hour, Paul Wallen. Hi, everybody. This is Paul Wallen of Wallen & Clarich. Welcome to the WK Law Power Hour. This is our fifth show, and things are going extremely well. More people watching, more people listening, more people calling in, exactly how a radio show should go. I've been a lawyer for over 40 years. I know that's hard to believe, but I've been a lawyer for that long. I'm the senior partner of Wallen and Clarich, and we're a law firm that has offices throughout Southern California to help you. But the purpose of this show is to keep you all up to date on all legal happenings in the United States. And there are a ton of them going on that you need to know about. It's also a place where you can call in or go to our website and ask any legal question you have, and we'll do our best to answer it. So like what kind of questions are you talking about that we answer every single day? The most common or one of the most common, I have a traffic ticket in Barstow, California, which is out in the desert. I don't want to drive 120 miles in the heat. Can you help me? The answer is, of course we can. And we'll explain exactly how we can help you. You know, I'm sick and tired of my marriage. I should have got out of it a long time ago. But finally, I need to file for a divorce. But I've got young kids. And I want custody. And I don't want to fight over that. What in the hell do I do? You call us. And we'll answer your questions. And here's the best part. For free not a dime. We'll tell you exactly what you can do. We'll tell you whether you need a lawyer or not. We'll tell you if you do, how much a lawyer will cost. We'll tell you what you should and shouldn't do. We'll even help you fill out the papers. Because child custody is one of the most important things in the world to a parent and, of course, to your children. And all of that, we have a brilliant family law lawyer with over 10 years experience, and she can answer your questions. So this is the Another question we get all the time is, I have a DUI. 
what should I do? You know what? Sometimes I drink and drive. What should I do? Should I take the blood test or the breath test or what kind of test should I take? We'll answer your questions. So maybe you can avoid getting a DUI. Anyway, all these questions can be answered if you call at 951-922-3532. Between now and, 9, and 315, which is about 10 minutes, I can answer some questions if you want to call in. And then you'll have another chance to ask questions at the end of the show. You can also ask questions of our guests when they come on. Um, you can also go to at Beach Lawyer Paul on TikTok and ask a question there, and I'll repeat it and answer it on the air. Um, so there's a million ways to get information for free. You can go to WKLaw.com, which is our website, and that's a tremendous amount of free information there. Everything from traffic tickets. What happens if I have a warrant? I don't want to get arrested. How do I post bail? What if I want a restraining order? Do you name it? We can answer it. We have over, we've helped over a quarter of a million people with their legal matters, a quarter of a million people. And some of them, unfortunately, many times, many because they don't learn their lesson. Today, we have two great guests. One is my law partner, a great lawyer, Eric Jones. He'll be our first guest, and he's going to be talking about how he handles cases in San Bernardino, the Inland Empire, Riverside, in terms of criminal matters and child dependency matters. We're going to be discussing with him, if you have a criminal case or a child dependency case, how in God's name do you decide who to hire? How do you decide what experience do you need? And how many years should they be practicing law? And is it important that they have experience in the court where you're going, as opposed to just general experience? So if you have a question of Eric, no problem, just call him at 951-922-3532, and we'll answer your question today. Our second guest on the show is a great, amazing lawyer doing an amazing thing for society. Oh, how can I help you, Jason? Hey, Paul. I, uh, first of all, I love your show. I just have a quick question. So I own a jewelry store in Beverly Hills, and I'm really afraid with you know COVID restrictions opening up in California. And I was wondering, am I able to enforce that people show me that they've been vaccinated before they can enter my store? Or is that against HIPAA violations? Or what are my options here? Wow, that is such a good question. In fact, that was something I was going to address on the show today. And the question oh, is, wow. this man has a shop, a jewelry store in Beverly Hills. And with the today was the day that the restrictions on people, the restrictions on COVID are, are now basically over. And basically, he doesn't want to let people in his shop that are unvaccinated. And obviously, if he, what's he going to do? Because that's what the law now says. Basically, anyone can walk into the store. It says if you're vaccinated, but they're not testing people. So this is going to be very, very interesting, and I hope everyone listening understands this. A private store owner has the right to not allow someone in their store unless they're fully vaccinated and have proof of vaccination. And if they don't have proof of vaccination, they have to wear a mask. Now, grocery stores... And like Costco, I guess because so many people are coming in, they haven't devised a way to figure out how they're going to show proof, right? So therefore, mm -hmm. they're doing it on the honor system. And you know what? That's not good. And not because people are liars, but because people are liars. They didn't get the <laughs> vaccine. And they didn't get the vaccine because they were told by the former president or who in the hell cares why they didn't get the vaccine. The point is... You don't want to be exposed to people like that, especially as a store owner, if you've got a medical condition and you don't, and even if you were vaccinated, because there are people with different medical conditions and e the vaccine is not 100 percent, doesn't make you 100 uh, percent safe. It's 90s, 95, but that's still that 5 percent. So you don't have to, sir, let someone in your store without a mask unless they show you proof. Now, they are talking about Governor Newsom is talking about a system that's going to be like a, a barcode on everyone's computer where you can show it and it can be scanned when you walk in the store. But it's going to meet resistance from store, stores like Costco, big stores that, you know, they're going to have to hire another employee. So the bottom line is, the bottom line is, 
you, sir, as the owner of a store, have the right to let people in your store or not if you feel you're unsafe. And I believe the law will support you in doing so. I believe it's a good law. And, and if you get challenged, call us and we'll take on your case. Okay. okay? Awesome. Thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate it. No problem. And you know what? That is really, really important. I don't know who thought up this idea that we're going to trust everyone who's not vaccinated to walk into a store without a mask and exposing anyone in the store that I'd have a medical condition or to possible infection, let alone the selfishness in reverse, meaning these people that aren't vaccinated are much more likely, of course, to get COVID. They're choosing, to, they're choosing to walk into a store with so many unvaccinated people who also are lying, and they're exposing themselves to COVID. It's that simple. When two unvaccinated people walk into a store and cough, they're just as exposed to getting the virus as the entire last year, because neither of them have been vaccinated. So it's a very weird situation. I'm so happy, guys. I'm so happy that people, that the vaccination, that the uh, Death rate is almost down to zero, very low, that the infections are very low, and the people that are getting infected are not dying. This is a great time in America. It's going to be a wonderful 2021. But that doesn't mean we need to go backwards. I think this is a good idea. I just wish that, that the government could establish a way where people that were not vaccinated had to, they had to show proof. If you want to go to a sporting event with over 5,000 people in California, you can't go in unless you've been vaccinated and have proof. So the question is, if they're doing that for sporting events, why not Costco that has thousands of people going in their stores? We'll see what happens, but it's really, really challenging. Anyway, let's get back to the show. So Saul Wolf. Oh. Caitlin, how can I help you, dear? Hi, I just had a quick question for you. So my neighbor is sort of crazy. He has tons of guns, and he just told me that he can now go out and buy an assault weapon. And I'm just very worried um, because why would anyone want an assault an, or need an assault weapon? Um, is it true that in California you can now go and buy an assault weapon? That's a very good question. And it, it deals with a, the a brand new – California has outlawed for many years now, many, like 30, that you're not allowed to buy an assault weapon in California. And that federal – a federal judge, a federal court of appeals judge appointed by the former president said, uh, actually appointed by Bush, said that an assault weapon is really no, no worse than a, than a knife, a Swiss Army knife, which is nuts. And he basically said it's unconstitutional for California to say that you can't buy an assault weapon in California. So, of course, California is appealing that decision. But the former President Trump appointed three conservative members to the Supreme Court. So I am extremely worried that when that case comes up before the Supreme Court, they may say California can't ban assault weapons. And as you said, what in God's name does someone need an assault weapon for except to blow people away? And that's exactly why we have a rising death rate from assault from gun violence. So ma'am, I pray that the, the Supreme Court, if they get that case, and they likely will, will say, no, California has the right to ban assault weapons. But currently, okay, but currently that is exactly where we're on, we're on that road. That case is going to be headed to the Supreme Court, and they're going to have to decide whether California, New York, and all the other blue states can ban assault weapons. And I pray to God that they can, because that would be one of the worst things possible. Anyway, thank you for your call, dear. It's a very, very topical question. I am afraid... A lot of people are afraid of why someone in their right mind would want an assault weapon. Okay? Okay. Thank you so much for that information. No problem. Thank you very much. And if you're interested in learning more about that decision by the Federal Appeals Court judge, all you have to do is type California law banning assault weapons challenged or to be overruled, and you can read exactly what the judge said. California's attorney general has made it clear that he is going to fight this and take it all the way to the Supreme Court. But as I said, the Supreme Court has six conservative justices and three liberal judges, and you need five justices to win out of nine. And the Second Amendment says that people have the right to bear arms, but it doesn't mean 
necessarily machine guns, tanks, there has to be a reasonable limit on what a person can carry. I'm all for someone being able to have a handgun for protection, but not assault weapons, because that to me is totally and absolutely insane. And I think the vast majority of Americans, I would bet 90%, do not believe the Second Amendment right to bear arms would include assault weapons. And I hope you agree with me, but to be honest, with whether you agree with me or not, I don't care. It's what it is. And we should not allow people to have assault weapons. After the commercial, that's, after the commercials are coming up, you're gonna get the opportunity to hear from Eric Jones, who's a brilliant criminal defense attorney, and he's available to answer your questions if you call 951-922-3532. That's 951-922-3532. And if you agree with me or disagree with me on assault weapons, that'd be a great thing to call in about because that really could change the law in California. And it's very, very, very scary. And so our next guest after Eric is a great lawyer, Saul Wolf. And Saul is a lawyer that represents people that are accused of, um, that, that have been victimized and are victims of sexual assault. And you will hear the amazing results he's received in large judgments and verdicts in those kind of cases. And I want you to understand that a victim of sexual assault has been ex ex extremely injured. It's so horrible to be a victim of sexual assault or child molestation. It can affect you for your entire life. And, that, and Saul's gonna talk about what happens when people come into his office and they reveal to him what's happened. And he's gonna talk about how, how they prove the case against the perpetrator. And that's not enough. They have to prove that, they have to prove that, they have to prove that the church knew about it. And it's amazing that he does it just, he does absolutely amazing work. Anyway, um, we'll be back after this commercial message from our sponsors. You've been charged with a crime and now you're facing the loss of your freedom. Where do you turn to get out of jail or stay out of jail? The law offices of Wallen and Claridge. Call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With over 20 years experience and attorneys who work in your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. When you need help, make one call. Make it to Wallen and Claridge. 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? Hey, are you okay to drive? Yeah, I'm fine. 17, the central jail. If you've been arrested for DUI and are facing DMV in court hearings, it could mean losing your license, your job, and even your freedom. But Wallen and Claridge can help. Just call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With attorneys who know your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. Call Wallen and Claridge at 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? When your children are taken by social workers, it may be the worst day of your life. When will I see my children again? Where are they going? How can I get them back? Who can I turn to for help to end this nightmare? The answers to all these questions are a phone call or email away. Wallen and Clarish have been helping defend parents who are battling the system to regain custody of their children for 40 years. Many of their clients have done nothing wrong to warrant their children being taken from them. Other clients may regret some action that they've taken with their children. However, in every case, the clients desperately need their children back. That's where Wallen and Clarish comes in. They know the dependency system. They will do all they can to work to try to get your children back with you. Take the first step and call Wallen and Clarish now for a free phone consultation at 877-466-5245. That's 877-466-5245. Or visit WKLaw.com to chat with us. They'll be there when you call. If you are facing criminal charges, your entire future is at stake. You need to act now to protect your job, your family, and your freedom. Call Wallen and Claridge at 877-4-NO-JAIL. Wallen and Claridge has over 30 years of experience in fighting for our clients' rights. 
With local offices in Riverside and San Bernardino, we are here to help you now. Call 877-4NO-JAIL or go to WKLaw.com. How much is your freedom worth? Call 877-466-5245. The call is free. Will you be? When you have a warrant for your arrest, it's a very scary time in your life. When you drive a car, you have to be extra careful that you do not commit any sort of moving violation. You have to be looking over your shoulder, checking for police officers. Will you be stopped and thrown in jail? What a horrible feeling. For over 40 years, we have helped thousands of persons resolve their problem with having a warrant. In some cases, we can actually appear in court for you without you being present to recall the warrant. Depending on the facts of your case, you may never have to do one minute in jail. Stop living in fear. Call us now for a free phone consultation at 877-4-NO-JAIL. That is 877-4-NO-JAIL or go to WKLaw.com. Isn't it time to get your life back? We will be there when you call. Welcome back, everybody. This is Paul Wallen of the WK Law Power Hour, and it's my great good fortune to introduce Eric Jones, who's a tremendous lawyer and a member of Wallen and Claridge for many years. Hi, Eric. Hi, Paul. How are you today? I'm doing great, and I'm so happy to have you as a guest on the program because you have a wealth of knowledge that can help people. Can you first of all tell us how long you've been a lawyer and where you went I've, to law school? Yes, I, I've been a lawyer for uh, almost 12 years now, and I went to law school at the uh, out of state at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. Um, went there from... Uh, 2006 to 2009. Okay. And what made you decide to go to law school in the first place? I went to law school a little later in, in uh, life. Uh, late 20s is when I started. I'd already finished college and, and was trying to figure out what direction I wanted to go with my life. And I think I just kind of stumbled upon the law as something that where I could achieve my goals of, of wanting to make a difference and help people in their lives, um, as well as have something that's, you know, intellectually challenging and something, frankly, I could do for, you know, make a career out of for a long time. Uh, so, you know, that, that was my basic idea when I went to law school and I had some, I also had some friends and some colleagues that I'd spoken to about it and it just seemed like a good fit for me. And what areas of law do you practice at our firm? I primarily practice criminal defense. Um, that's what I've mainly been doing for the past 11 plus years as an attorney. I also do uh, some juvenile dependency work as well as some restraining orders. And um, that that's pretty much encompasses what my caseload consists of. And do you find that those areas of law are fulfilling and are sort of fulfill the goal that you had of becoming a lawyer? Yes. Um, you know, I, I get to work directly with the clients. Um, it's a, you know, it's a very, uh, you know, we're often in court together on majority of these cases, or at least if I'm, if the client isn't present, um, I'm communicating with them shortly after the hearings. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, exchange of information, learning about their background, um, their life history. Um, you know, because a lot of times it's about painting a picture of the client as a person to the system, to the judicial system, to the prosecutors, to the other attorneys involved in the case, um, rather than letting whatever the reports say about a particular individual govern how the judge or the prosecutor determines how to view them. And you handle cases um, in uh, San Bernardino and Riverside counties, right? Yes. And you go to all the courts then in those counties, depending yes. on where the case is. And uh, you're a partner at Wallen and Claridge, right? Correct. And we have offices in both. Where do we have offices in San Bernardino County? Uh, we have two offices in San Bernardino County, um, one in uh, San Bernardino, the city of San Bernardino. Uh, it's walking distance to the uh, Criminal Justice Center here in San Bernardino, as well as the Family Law Court across the street. Uh, there's also an office in Victorville, 
uh, very close to the Victorville Court. Uh, those are our two offices in San Bernardino County. So we have an office in San Bernardino and Victorville close to the court, and we also have an office in Riverside close to the court there, right? Yes, there's also an office in Riverside that um, in a little distance of the. Uh oh. Do you think it's important when facing a criminal charge to have a lawyer that is um, experienced in that particular court, in those particular courts? Uh oh. Your mic has gone out. Is it back? Yeah, now it's back. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Technical difficulties. Um, yes, to answer your question, yes, I, I think having a lawyer that is familiar with the court that your case is in is very important. Um, ultimately, the laws are the same from county to county and court to court in the state of California, but the people are different. And ultimately, when you're working at the trial court level, you're dealing with the same people over and over again with the cases and having a familiarity with the procedures of a particular courtroom, procedures of a particular courthouse, um, and who the prosecutors are, who the attorneys are on the case, who the court staff is, how they do things. It's of vital importance. And that is information you develop over time by practicing in those courts and working with those people and developing a, a camaraderie and trust, and as well as uh, you establish your reputation in the particular court. So, you know, I always advise people, like, you know, if someone calls me and says, hey, I have a DUI out of Los Angeles, will you represent me? I usually tell them I'm not the best person to do it, but we have attorneys at my firm that handle that court all the time, and they would be a better person to represent you for a DUI out of Los Angeles. I think it's I think it's really important, especially in criminal defense and child dependency, even family law, even though I don't practice that, to have local attorneys who are familiar with the courts represent you. And when a judge gets to know you, since the judge is making decisions on so many things in a case, if you have credibility in the eyes of that judge, the judge is much more likely to believe you, right? Yes, I think I think that, and that's something that has to be established over time. Um, it, there's just no other way around that. Um, you know, it, it, it's just human nature, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And you know, one of the things I'm most proud of about Wallen and Claridge is that we have devised for many, many years, like decades now, that exact goal, that when we have a, a lawyer who can concentrate in just one or two vital courts, they become very familiar, whether it be in Orange County or LA County or San Bernardino or Riverside. When someone calls me about a case and I'm in the Tustin office and they talk about a case in San Bernardino, I immediately know that you know everyone in that court and you know exactly how to handle it, whether it's how to get him out of jail on bail in that court or where is the case going to be heard and by what judge. You just know it because you do it every day. That's why it's a very bad decision, in my opinion, to hire a lawyer in Los Angeles to go and handle a case in Riverside because they likely don't know anything about it. They're going to charge you more money for the time they have to take to get a Thomas guy to figure out where the court is and drive there. And with gas going to soon hit $5 a gallon, let me assure you that you will be the one paying for that. You agree with what I just said? Yes, I, I think that's all correct. And, you know, I guess I would add that, um, you know, there's, there's also an efficiency to having local counsel um, handle your case as well, because they're going to know how best to, you know, ultimately you're dealing with the bureaucracy, um, you know, law enforcement, the court system, district attorney's office, you know, there's a lot of bureaucracy involved and red tape. And so having a local attorney who's used to dealing with the players in that system uh, can help make your case go through the system more efficiently um, because they know how to deal with the bureaucracy of it. Yeah, that's what that's sort of what the basis for our law firm is having lawyers and legal assistants know so much about the case where your court is going that you have a much, much better chance of getting a 
good outcome on your case than someone that just doesn't know that court very and is going to be learning and sort of like practicing on you as maybe his first case or her first case in that court. Um, you handle very serious criminal cases, right? I, I handle, yes, the gamut from, you know, lower level misdemeanors to very serious felony cases involving potentially life in prison. And how do you deal with it emotionally when you're ta having to talk to a family and let's say they're you know that the person is going to be guilty of a major crime, and I know you're going to work to try to get him the best sentence possible, but you know that he's going to be doing many, many years in prison. How do you deal with it emotionally, and how do you explain it to the family in a way that they can understand? I think you just have to, you know, show a lot of empathy um, towards, especially family. Uh, you know, there's a, you know, one of the tragedies of, you know, crimes that happen uh, is that there's so much collateral damage. Um, and, you know, assuming that the defendant is, you know, that the prosecutor can prove the case and, and then, you know, something, you know, uh, serious violent felony has occurred or something like that. Um, you know, it, there's a victim involved, victim's family, there's defendant's family, and they're all kind of collateral damage to what's happening. And I think it's important to show empathy for uh, all those people, even though we don't represent, you know, the victims or their families. But nonetheless, um, you know, as a professional, you have to empathize with people when they're going through tra traumatic experiences. And um, you also have to empathize with the client because sometimes, you know, I think none of us would ever want to be judged uh, based on our worst days. And um, and so, you know, there has to be some empathy for everyone involved in the system. When you represent someone accused of a very serious crime and, in fact, they tell you that they're guilty, some people would say, how can you represent someone who committed such a, such a heinous crime? How, how do you respond to that? I think, you know, we have a system in place. Um, that is to ensure that everyone gets a fair procedure when going through being accused of a crime. That doesn't mean that every you know, defendant, my job is to get an acquittal or get the prosecutor to dismiss the case. Sometimes my job is to make sure that their rights are respected, that the uh, procedures outlined by the constitutional law, by uh, California law are followed, that the system treats them fairly um, and justly, and that the whatever the punishment is going to be, it fits the conduct that can be proven. So, you know, sometimes it's just making things, sure things are fair, and it's not necessarily making sure that, you know, every person that I represent gets an acquittal or the case sure. dismissed. So basically, it's a case where the DA may be wanting 30 years in prison and you get to know the family and you're going to argue for much, much less time so it doesn't destroy their whole li his whole life, right? Potentially. I mean, that's, that's one hypothetical. Uh, sometimes it's getting probation instead of state prison. Sometimes it's working out a different number if there's going to be multiple years in state prison on a case. Uh, sometimes it's getting some of the charges thrown out or dismissed because it's 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 overcharged and the evidence doesn't support all the charges, just some of them. It, it, it really just depends case to case and, and there's no like broad general rule for it other than as attorneys, I think we, we try to look at each case individually and determine whether um, you know, what legal defenses are available, what, what factual defenses are available, and, and what would be fair based mm -hmm. on our experience and what the laws are. Well, Eric, I want you to know that I am honored to have you uh, as a partner at our law firm. You're a brilliant lawyer. Anyone who gets you as a lawyer with our anyone who uses you as a lawyer with our firm is very lucky. And I want to thank you very much for being on the show. And we definitely are going to have you back because there's so much more to cover. Thank you very much. And thank you for the kind words and thank you for having me.
No problem. And now we're going to go to commercial, and after commercial, we'll have Saul Wolf as a guest. You've been charged with a crime, and now you're facing the loss of your freedom. Where do you turn to get out of jail or stay out of jail? The law offices of Wallen and Claridge. Call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With over 20 years' experience and attorneys who work in your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. When you need help, make one call. Make it to Wallen and Claridge. 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? When your children are taken by social workers, it may be the worst day of your life. When will I see my children again? Where are they going? How can I get them back? Who can I turn to for help to end this nightmare? The answers to all these questions are a phone call or email away. Wallen and Clarish have been helping defend parents who are battling the system to regain custody of their children for 40 years. Many of their clients have done nothing wrong to warrant their children being taken from them. Other clients may regret some action that they've taken with their children. However, in every case, the clients desperately need their children back. That's where Wallen and Clarish comes in. They know the dependency system. They will do all they can to work to try to get your children back with you. Take the first step and call Wallen and Clarish now for a free phone consultation at 877-466-5245. That's 877-466-5245. Or visit WKLaw.com to chat with us. They'll be there when you call. Hey, are you okay to drive? Yeah, I'm fine. If you've been arrested for DUI and are facing DMV in court hearings, it could mean losing your license, your job, and even your freedom. But Wallen and Claridge can help. Just call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With attorneys who know your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. Call Wallen and Claridge at 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? When you are facing a serious criminal charge, it means you may be looking at many years in prison or doing up to one year in county jail. Most people do not know who to turn to in their time of need for expert legal guidance. What you do next can make the difference between ending up in prison for many years or having your charges dismissed and you going free. At this very critical time in your life, you need Wallen and Clarish fighting for you. Wallen and Clarish has 40 years of criminal defense experience and they work very hard to do all they can to win their clients' cases. Wallen and Clarish has a team of 10 criminal defense lawyers fighting for their clients every day. They help people with cases pending throughout California. They successfully defend cases dealing with murder, sex crimes, all felonies, as well as misdemeanors. Check out WKLaw.com for some real client success stories. They offer a free phone consultation to answer your questions. Call them toll free at 877 for no jail. That's 877 for no jail. They will be there when you call. Take KMET 1490 AM with you everywhere you go by downloading our free smartphone apps found on the KMET website, KMET1490AM.com. You can also go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store on your phone to download the free app. Now you can listen live or play any of your favorite programmers' podcasts using your smartphone. Go to KMET1490AM.com and download your free phone app today. If you are facing criminal charges, your entire future is at stake. You need to act now to protect your job, your family, and your freedom. Call Wallen and Clarich at 877-4-NO-JAIL. Wallen and Clarich has over 30 years of experience in fighting for our clients' rights. With local offices in Riverside and San Bernardino, we are here to help you now. Call 877-4-NO-JAIL or go to WKLaw.com. How much is your freedom worth? Call 877-466-5245. The call is free. Will you be? Hello, this is Paul Wallen. We're back. And our guest now is a tremendous lawyer, Saul Wolf, who I have known since probably T-Ball um, when I coached my own son, Mike, like many years that I won't mention. Hi, Saul. Hi, Paul. How are you? Nice to hear from you. Yes, nice to hear from you. Saul was going to actually get connected um, 
and we were actually get to hear his, see his real face, but uh, it didn't work, and that's what live television is all about. And so we're going to talk to Saul on the phone about his extremely interesting and challenging legal career. Um, Saul, can you first of all tell me how long you've been a lawyer? Sure. And Paul, thanks for having me on, by the way. I really appreciate it. Um, no problem. I, re- I really appreciate it. I, uh, I've been a lawyer since 2006, um, so I guess that makes almost 15 years now at the end of 2006 when I got sworn in. And can you tell me where you went to undergraduate and where you went to law school? Sure. So I started out undergrad at uh, Wake Forest University out in North Carolina. Um, got the opportunity to play some sports in college and uh, played there for a year and went to school and then came out to UC Irvine and finished at UC Irvine my last three years, and graduated from UC Irvine, and then stayed local in Orange County, uh, went to Chapman University for, for law school, which is now the Fowler uh, School of Law. So I stayed local and stayed local in Orange County working uh, for a firm here. And how long have you been working at, I think you worked for that firm for a number of years and then you went to another firm and went back? How did that work? Correct, yeah. So when I was in undergrad, I was trying to figure out whether I wanted, what I wanted to do. I started working for John Manley at the, the previously named Manley and uh, Manley McGuire. Um, worked here all through law school as a law clerk. Started as a new lawyer here for John. Um, it's now called Manley Stewart Finaldi. And then decided to, to try new things and went to a larger firm in a different area of law um, and realized that um, it wasn't the same. I, I wasn't getting the same gratification I was working for Manly Stewart and Finaldi. I came back in 2016 um, and have been here for, for more than five years now, uh, back at it, and really, really happy I did it to come back and got, got the band together, so to speak. Sure. Just briefly, what area of law did you practice in your uh, the other firm? Uh, I went and did mostly construction defect defense, which was uh, quite a quite a difference. I did a lot of real estate law. My first kind of go around with with John because he he'll tell you that he began as a real estate lawyer before he started to to get into the sexual abuse um, types of cases. Um, but uh, so I went in over and did construction defect defense, which was completely different and not something that I necessarily got a lot of gratification from, so I came sure. back af- after that. Totally different. And why don't you tell us, so, so the listeners understand, tell us exactly what, you're, what you do as a lawyer now in your firm. Sure. So our firm uh, exclusively handles uh, representation of victims and their families uh, where those victims are, are of childhood or childhood sexual abuse or sexual assault. Um, so we represent victims, or we like to call them survivors, um, of those who have suffered, unfortunately, from sexual abuse and sexual assault, mostly as children, but we also represent uh, adult sexual assault survivors, and that's the exclusive um, type of cases that we handle. Wow. So that, wait, to go from that kind of work to construction defect... <laughs> And then, I mean, there must have been an emotional, like, I can't explain it. Doing criminal defense and dealing with people facing years in prison and the emotion, and, and you can make the difference between, you know, what if we forget to ask a question and the guy gets convicted, oh, my God, you know, such emotion. And let's say I went to work doing construction defect. I like, I say, that's law too. It must have been an amazing difference, right, emotionally? Well, I, you know, it, it kind of goes back even further. So when I first started working for John, I, we were working on the sexual abuse cases, and I was. And that was, not to get too personal, but that was before I had children, right? And I actually had a harder time working on those cases when I didn't have children. I, it stuck with me more when I'd go home. I'd had a harder time working, so I wanted to get away from it a little bit and went to a different area. Realized that, I, you know, the grass is not always greener and that I wasn't getting the same gratification, like I said. So... Uh, even though it was completely different, to come back to working on these types of cases, the sexual abuse cases, was was hard. And now, as a parent, I actually have three children of my own. Um, it's horrible it's, kids. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I kind of like them. Uh, <laughs> they 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 uh, it, it helps me find more passion for what I do. Um, you know, I not that I am overly and 
you know, that it, that it gets in the way of what I'm doing. Um, but I really have a passion for what I'm doing because I see my children as potential victims all the time. And I see these families that need help, and I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be as a parent of a child who was sexually abused. So, um, you know. I understand. Yeah. Working in this area, the, uh, unfortunately or not, on the other side of this, um, yeah. it has always made me an extremely overprotective parent, probably to yeah. the point that my oldest son is completely neurotic, he'll tell you. Um, I'm wondering, does the fact that you work in this area of law, do you believe, impact the level of your protectiveness of your children? Certainly. Um, I think it's a natural thing for, for, for someone who's in this area to do, like yourself. I mean, that's the reason why I, as much as I can, despite being incredibly busy, I coach my daughter's soccer team. I, um, I'm a meet director for my son's swim, swim club. So I'm, you know, especially with COVID, it's, it's a whole nother level because there's no spectators allowed. So my only in to, <laughs> to be around my kids sure. sometimes is be volunteering. So, yeah, I mean, to answer your question for certain, um, that I'm overly, overly protective, diligent is, is probably putting it very, very sure. lightly. How, how do you decide when a person comes in or calls on the phone and says that they are a victim of sexual abuse, how do you decide whether or not your firm is going to be able to take on the case? I assume part of it has to do with the ability to recover, but why don't you yeah. tell us that? So if people are listening and they want to call you, by the way, right now, what is your phone number if they want to reach you? Sure. Uh, the, the number at the office here is area code 949-252-9990. That's 949-252-9990. And again, the firm is Manly, M-A-N-L-Y, Stewart and Finaldi, that's F-I-N-A-L-D-I. We're in Irvine. We have offices on the East Coast as well, um, but our primary office is in Irvine. Um, to answer your question about how we decide, yes, you're right. A lot of what we, what we can, are able to do for someone um, is, hinges on the ability to recover, and what that means is typically our cases do not involve uh, a sexual abuse situation where it's um, an individual perpetrator that's not tied to an institutional defendant. For instance, like if it's, and it happens a lot, which is really unfortunate, when, you know, an uncle or um, a babysitter or a friend, those types of cases are not typically the cases we're able to take on. We do help our clients and find someone to help them in those regards, but those aren't our cases typically. And that's because um, it's very difficult to get recovery, right? Correct. Correct. It's it's if not difficult. It's if if not difficult, it's it's impossible sometimes because a lot of the perpetrator defendants that we go after are judgment proof, which means that they've got no assets. And so, to find some recovery for our clients to help them with therapy, to help them recover for their pain and suffering, the cases that we we focus on where is where there's a school, a church, um, some sort of entity defendant that hires the perpetrator defendant and allows it to happen. Now, so the other part of... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to clarify it for the, everyone that's listening and watches this later. So what you're saying is you're really not, even though you're bringing a lawsuit against the perpetrator, you're really not counting on getting any money from the perpetrator. You need to draw some kind of legal liability from the church or the school about that they, did, they didn't properly vet the person, they didn't properly supervise the person, and that led to the molest. Am I right? Absolutely correct. Correct. And that and um, that is, but you need to obviously prove the case, right? So sure. do you call? Does the does the perpetrator end up testifying in these cases if it goes to trial? It depends. Um, to go back to your previous question about how we decide, you know, we have a very uh, detailed intake process that we undertake. Um, for obvious reasons. One, we want to make sure that we understand all the ins and outs about the allegations. And two, we want to make sure that, you know, we want to make sure that people are, are being upfront with us and revealing all the information that they have. So the intake process is very detailed. We have uh, former law enforcement on staff that help us with the intake because they're and former sexual uh, assault investigators that help us with that process. Now, to go back to your second question, um, now I'm forgetting it, but it relates to to the the tie between the defendant and 
right. and, and the case. Now, the individual defendant, sometimes we have concurrent criminal prosecution with our civil case, which means that the, the criminal case against the perpetrator sometimes is still going on at the same time as the, the time we filed our civil case. And in those situations, typically the perpetrator defendant, the individual, the abuser, ha- will plead the fifth or not testify. Sometimes when the criminal case has gone and already happened and they've either been convicted or um, you know, found not guilty for whatever reason, they still will testify. So it kind of depends on the status of the criminal prosecution and whether that's still ongoing or where, where that hap- how that has uh, unfolded. But, in fact, isn't it true that if, the, if a client comes in and says, this person molested me and, in fact, he pled guilty, it's much more likely that you're going to be interested in that case, assuming it happened related to a church or to a school, right? Because yeah, you don't have to prove that it happened because he's confessed to it and pled guilty, right? Certainly. That takes one hurdle out of the case, for sure. It's more attractive in terms of the ability to to get to judgment or get to a resolution. Okay. Um, and and the one question I want to ask also, because I now realize you need to be on this. Literally, I need to call, have you back come for an entire show because I have like okay. 90 more questions to ask you. But okay. what I just want to hit on one thing before this is you have actually received recoveries of huge amounts of money. Um, let's just talk for just a minute. It, literally, I have a minute about okay. this one case where you received a massive settlement of $31 million. First of all, that's accurate, right? That is accurate. That was against Torrance Unified School District um, relating to a high school wrestling coach by the name of Thomas Snyder, who is now serving a ton of time in prison up in Central California. Um, but, yes, that, that is true. There were, I think, 25 uh, minor victims that we represent or, or thereabouts in terms of the number of children who were affected by this coach and we were able to secure a $31 million settlement on behalf of those those survivors against the school district, which was basically on the eve of trial. We were, I think, uh, about to do motions in limine, which means we were about to start trial when they wow. settled. Wow, that's unbelievable. And you've had other huge verdicts also, $14 million and other verdicts. So first of all, do you promise you'll come back and we can talk about this much more? I promise I will, and I promise that I'll sort out the video component, and I apologize <laughs> for that. <laughs> That's great. And I want you, everyone to know if you have been, vict- have been a victim of sexual assault or know someone who's a victim of sexual assault, can you give your phone number one more time, Saul? Sure. 949-252-9990. Again, 949-252-9990. And my name is Saul, S-A-U-L, last name Wolf, like the animal, W-O-L-F, with manly Stewart and Finaldi. I appreciate it, Paul. Great. Thank you, Saul. And thank you, everyone, for listening to this show. I want you to know what an amazing lawyer. You're lucky. If, if God forbid you have something like this, you need him. Anyway, thanks for listening to this fantastic show. And next week, we're going to have great guests again. And I want you to have a great... Okay. I want you guys. I want you guys to know that it is one of the joys of my life to be able to have this show. Because if I can impart legal knowledge and legal education to one person and it helps them not commit a certain crime or helps them get custody of their children, they can get proper legal guidance, then the time I spent in preparing for the show and the time I spend at figuring out what questions to ask and deciding what guests to ask, I'm only doing that so I can get a broad range of different lawyers to help as many people as possible. So if you think this is a great show and you think it's enjoyable, spread it, spread it among your friends and my TikTok friends. Definitely spread the word that this is a great show to be able to, to educate people. And I appreciate everyone and the, all of my staff that helps me do this show. I really appreciate it because I would never have thought how much work goes into a show like this to present it properly. So anyway, I want to thank everyone for listening, and I'll see you again next week.